So what I've got here is I've got this trolley assembly. This is actually one of the AutoCAD mechanical provided examples. And if we were to look at the existing bill of materials here, as we can see that there's already some information in here. So I can see that there's some hardware, there's you know a wheel component, the information that defines so where that information come from. Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a small plate in here. So let's just start by, you know, maybe we want to add in a rectangle. And we wanna add some, some information to this. So kind of from that same place where I accessed the bill of materials is I'm gonna find the option for part references. So if I go and I add in or I create a part reference, what it's looking for me to do is it's looking for me to select an object. But if we take a look at the options, what I can also do is I can associate it with a block. So if you haven't already you know, pre-embedded the part reference into the block, you can, you can associate it with a block and then kind of associate with all the, the block instances of it. In this case, what I wanna do is I just wanna add it to this rectangle. And what this is gonna be, this is gonna be a, description is gonna be this is a, a keeper plate. And I'm not noticing all the properties that I want to, to track from. So I can see standard and I can see material, but maybe you know I wanna add some other information to this. So I can go into the settings and this is launching the AutoCAD mechanical settings, which I could have got through through the options. And I can see the, the properties that it's, it's currently tracking. So maybe what we wanna do is we also wanna add in this description too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag and drop. I'm gonna add in description two because what we're gonna use description two for is some description about the, the type of material that it is. So now that description two is in there. I'm gonna say, well, it's a plate. It's eight millimeter plate is what I'm gonna say. So just add in that extra description information in there. I'm gonna click OK. Now we can see that that part reference is associated with that rectangle. If I was to take this rectangle and move it, notice that the part reference would, be move, would move with it. What I also wanna do is I wanna take this and I wanna mirror this. So let's use the, the mirror command. Let's mirror it about this point. So I also wanna mirror this. I want to actually have two of these. So I'm gonna select the part reference and that rectangle, and let's mirror this. So do I wanna delete the source objects? No, no, I don't. So now I've got two of those plates. Well, now if I go and look at that bill of materials, what we're gonna see is that notice that that has been added to the list. So now I can see that there's two of these plates, these keeper plates, with the description of information in there. So it's really that easy. You just go in and you, you add in that part reference, you, you associate it to an object, and now that information is automatically tracked by AutoCAD Mechanical. Now the part references don't need to be associated to anything. So maybe in this area here, what, I, what I'm hoping to do is that some Loctite gets put on there. So what we want is we want some Loctite because we want to make sure that then when this is fastened that it's not going anywhere. So I'm gonna click okay to that. We can see that that information's been placed there. Actually, I'm just gonna double click on it because I didn't really put any quantity in there. Um, so maybe there's actually you know 10 uh, milliliters in here. And if we go into the bill materials, what we're gonna see is that that information's been added. Now there are certain features within AutoCAD Mechanical that automatically bring in the information. I'm gonna go to the content tab and I'm going to insert a bolted connection. So I've picked the bolt. So what I did is I used the bolted connection wizard. I can see I made it a little bit long. We're gonna have to go back and tweak that. But I, I used it to insert the bolt and the nut. I also drilled some holes. And because it came from the AutoCAD mechanical content library, if we were to go now and take a look at that bill of materials, what I'm gonna see now is that notice that the nut and that you know, hex head screw have been automatically, there's already part information associated with it. 
Now, since it came from the content library, then the standards associated with it. Okay, well, maybe we buy, you know, these deep, these deep groove ball bearings. This is actually an SKF bearing. So I can see that, you know, there's no option for me to put the manufacturer in there. So let's go back into the settings and let's add in a new value. So I'm gonna add in a new value for the manufacturer. We're gonna add it into our component properties. And I can change it right from within the bill of materials. I don't need to go to the particular part reference. Once the part reference is in there, I can tweak and adjust that information from here. Now, what else can I do from within this dialog? Well, we already saw how we can, you know, add properties. We've already seen how we can change your know, properties in here. I also have the ability to export this, so I can export this out to a CSV. So notice that I can CSV and and DWF, DBF. Also, you know, uh, tab delimited text file and HTML. So there's some options to get that information out of AutoCAD Mechanical. If I was to take this, this, this drawing and insert it into another one, well, I can set its properties here so that the information automatically populates whatever drawing it's going into. Notice that I can pick components from here and I can actually find, I can zoom into that particular part reference detail so I, you know, it's easier to find. Notice from here I can actually highlight them again so when I exit out it's easier to find. I can also add specific pro uh, information in here. So maybe we want items that are not going to be ballooned. So maybe you've got some packaging information, maybe you know Loctite or grease or something you don't necessarily want to you know, identify where they go. Well you can add that via the, the bill of materials. Okay, so that's the, the bill of materials, that's the part references. Well, the other thing that we can do is we can balloon this. So notice that there's a collection of balloon tools, and what I'm able to do is go and select that part reference, and notice that it uses that part reference as the location for the balloon. Now, there are options that it doesn't have to be that way, is that I could you know pick the part reference and pick a different insertion point, but notice that I'm able to place in that, that balloon quite easily, quite, quite quickly. Well, if we were to look at the balloon options, one of the balloon options is auto. So then what I can do is I could window around a collection of balloons. Now here, notice how the, the leaders are automatically arranging themselves so they don't cross over as I move them. And what I'm able to do is I'm able to right click here, maybe you know these were, should have been vertical, or maybe I wanted these to be around so I could pick an area, a rectangular area that I want these balloons to be around. I can also go to a particular angle and say, well, I want them across this angle here and then position them. Now the spacing is all set within your standard. So the spacing between balloons um, is set or the default is set within the settings. And we'll go into that in, in a second. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick, I'm gonna locate the balloons and we can see that our, our numbers are set. Now here I'm looking at these three balloons, they're not quite where I want them to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select them, right click on them, I'm gonna reorganize them because it actually would make more sense in there, a little bit cleaner if I just place them along the side here. So it's just a little bit cleaner. As these three are kind of pointed here to, you know, inside this, this part here, I'm gonna take them and I'm gonna collect them. So I'm gonna take these three balloons we're gonna collect them onto this balloon and notice how they're all now collected onto that, that singular balloon. So there's just multiple quantities in there. So now we've collected them onto a single balloon. So lots of options to, to make changes to that. Well, let's go into our options. And in our options, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our, our AutoCAD mechanical specific settings. I'm gonna go into the balloons which notice launches the, you know, kind of the same dialogue we saw from the bill of materials. Right now we can see that it's using the item and we can see the current shape that it's using. So I'm gonna click on that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna change this to an open. And in this case, then it's going to remove the balloon size factor because there's no sizing on that balloon anymore. I'm gonna increase the horizontal spacing to 50, the vertical spacing to 40, and I'm gonna increase the text height just a little bit, and we're gonna click okay. 
So we can see that information is updated. I'll click OK. And we can see how our balloons have changed. So now if I was to select these balloons and I was to right click and do a reorganize, we can see now that the spacing is different. Notice how that spacing is being applied differently. So it's automatically spacing them. Now, obviously, if you wanted to move them, you can just use your grips and you can just you know, realign them from there. So you can see you got lots of control over this. So you've got a control over which property is displayed in the balloons. You can see that I can you know, adjust whether it is a balloon, what shape is the balloon, the spacing, all that information is available to me. Okay, well now what I want to do is I want to present the information. So obviously I've got a, you know, some type of bill of materials in my drawing that represent or matches the balloons. And in this case, what we do is we do a parts list. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a parts list, which is a representation of your bill of materials. So you don't need to have all the information that's in your bill of materials within the parts list, which is displayed on the drawing. So maybe you're going to shoot your bill of materials off to your purchasers and it needs more information than maybe what's in the drawing that you're presenting to, to the assemblers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the standard column. We're going to keep the material. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert a column to the right because the column that I want to include is that description to column. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag and drop the material, move it to the end. And let's take the item numbers and let's sort by the item number. So we're going to sort by the item number and we'll click OK. And it's now sorted that information. I guess I should actually sort that the other way. So we're going to sort that ascending. So we've sorted the information. Now the title here, we're going to call this the, the bomb. We're going to do this from the top left. We're going to insert that from. So it's going to go from the top to bottom. And we're going to click OK, and we're going to place in that parts list. Now again, the text sites, the coloring, that information is all configurable within the, the options. Now let's say that we've, we've decided that we no longer want that Loctite in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that part reference and I'm going to erase it. And what we're going to see is that if I go look at this parts list, notice that the Loctite's not visible because it's been removed. I removed that part reference and my bill materials and my parts list has automatically updated. If I go over to this unit and we take that rectangle and we're going to remove the rectangle, and we're also going to remove that part reference. Notice that by removing the part reference, it automatically removed the balloon that was associated to it. And if I go take a look at the option there for that keeper plate, notice that the quantity is now down to one as well. So it's always in sync as you add components, remove components, part references, you tweak the information, the information updates, synchronizes everywhere. Well, let's double click on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a filter and I'm going to filter only the ones that are ballooned. So I'm going to click OK. So now it's filtering out for only the items that are ballooned. So we can see that the list of items has shortened because only those balloons, only those items that are ballooned are included. So let's do another balloon. We'll do an auto around the bottom here. We'll pick our location. And what we're going to see is that our parts list has updated because I've now got more components ballooned. So there's so many options in here, yet it is very easy to use. Once you've got your settings configured, you know, through the which properties you want to see, you can insert those part references. And then, you know, the build materials in the parts list almost kind of comes for free along with that information. So that's the AutoCAD mechanical bill and material system.